Russia's main movers and shakers. Frenchtown and Baintown, which produced the achievers of yesteryear, still provide homes for the underclass, mostly, mostly the present day less privileged, together with immigrants from Haiti and other Caribbean islands. Meanwhile, as Over the Hill expands in that way, large commercial and industrial establishments continue to base themselves in this historic sector of our land. And so this year, as we in the Bahamas celebrate 37 years as an independent nation, those of us who hail from over there, over the hill, must look back with pride to our roots and to this area from which we came. Thank you very much. Having said that, few of them had papers. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you as a, a practicing lawyer, particularly in those days when I did a lot of that kind of work, and it was quite difficult for them to get mortgages or uh, utilize their property in any way. And it was only after some of them started dealing their properties to descendants, children, and so on, that take a title began to develop. But they were all through neighbors and the evidence, the affidavits of the, uh, uh, residents in the vicinity, they could find proof that it belonged to them or the grandma or the grandma or the grandpa and that they were entitled to be there. Can somebody relay that for me? What got you started in the legal profession? Were you influenced by the cotton tree justice? <laughs> <laughs> I lived two blocks south of St. Agnes Church. And uh, required by my parents, as most youngsters, I see, I roughly them, to attend church regularly. My brother and I each had a morning that we had to serve. And I became so engrossed in the functions of priests and bishops and the rest of them that I decided that I wanted to become a bishop. <coughs> that was my first impression. And as a youngster, around 10 or so, when I announced this, I was told that I just couldn't become a bishop. I had to first become a deacon, and then a priest, and maybe an archdeacon. And very few persons really were the best spider not to become a bishop. So I decided, well, to hell with that. <laughs> <laughs> I then decided to become a lawyer. My idol then was the Honorable A.F. Adam and very happily and fortunately, um, when I finished high school, um, I was admitted to Cambridge University and couldn't afford to go. And so he took me into his chambers as an article of student. And as they say, the rest is history. I haven't regretted not being a bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, he took me in his chair to an article of the student, I qualified as a lawyer. And, and after 
after I returned from, um, I then went to, to, to London right after I was called. I did the local exam school, then I went to London and I joined the London University with the LIB and all that stuff you talked about. Okay. <laughs> and when I came back, um, uh, Eugene McHugh invited me to become the law partner. Foxen had another uh, distinct group of um, freed slaves. Yes. <clears throat> While we're on the topic of these settlements, some of which I understand were settlements of free slaves, that is, people who were never slaves in the Bahamas, but were just uh, dumped in the Bahamas. Liberated. Yeah. Uh, that's what it's called, eh? That's yeah. a bit. <laughs> but what interests me, having being to Cuba and other things like that, is how these people were Christianized so thoroughly. It's, I am not, I don't go quite as far back as the uh, author, but I cannot remember of any case of what happens of the syncretism that occurred in Cuba. In other words, where you worship Africans, African uh, Orishas, gods, in the form saints. In other words, Saint so-and-so is actually the god so-and-so in the African, uh, whatever you call it, the African uh, the theology. And I wanted to know, simply, since your memory is slightly down your mind, if you came across any incidences of African religion persisting despite the Christian context. Not the religion as such, but there were the the influences which were not Christian, which were practiced, like Obia and so on, which were practiced um, by, by the residents as a part of their culture, no doubt um, inherited from the, the African roots. Yes, Obia I remember too, but not political. Obia is magic. Yes. <laughs> and I gave that an example. No, I think there were, other, there were other practices. Um, in, in, in two, in including many of the, the um, foreign practices that people have, that which are dying out but still exist a little bit by um, you know putting you know, bottles of I think um, a part of the answer to George's question is um, the amount of, of liberated Africans that, that came here um, as towards the, the greater population 